Good morning, and welcome to Christ Church to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, there are quite a lot of notices today. Uh, first of all, last week we relaunched our Time and Talent Challenge, and you should have received in your email a copy of the Sunday Bulletin, which has all sorts of things in it about time and talent. Do look for that in your email. If you don't have a copy, let me know. And if you'd like a paper copy, uh, let me know, and that can be arranged. But people are offering things like a breakfast box with croissants and bread and marmalade to be delivered to your door. Good morning. Welcome to our Christchurch Pentecost service and a very warm welcome. There are lots of notices this morning. Um, first of all, our time and talent challenge, which we relaunched last week. Now, you'll read all about that in our bulletin. And if you haven't downloaded the bulletin, which came to you by email, please do so. Uh, if you would like a paper copy, let me know and that can be arranged. But there are all sorts of things. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have a breakfast box delivered to you with bread and croissant and marmalade. Uh, you can have elderflower cordial delivered to you. Uh, one of our local authors, uh, Fiona, is selling some of her own books, which she, will, uh, which she will sign for you. And you can have your LPs uploaded to CD. Uh, so plenty of things that are on offer. If there's something you'd like to advertise to raise the last few thousand pounds for our church reorganization, uh, then please get in touch with us, get in touch with Jonathan, uh, email any of us and we can uh, put you on the right lines so that you can advertise too in our bulletin. Secondly, Thomas, Thomas Walker Dali has completed his four year MA uh, and sadly is applying for jobs in Europe and so is leaving Christchurch. Um, he has promised to come back and visit us in the future. If as I'm saying this, you can't place Thomas, 
then watch out because he'll be reading the gospel and you'll see him there. And so Thomas, we wish you Godspeed and God's blessing on your future life. We've loved having you with us at Christchurch. Please come back and see us. Today's anthem is George Herbert's poem, Listen, Sweet Dove, set by Grayston Ives, and we'll hear that after the sermon. And the choir have also recorded, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. And that'll come towards the end of our service. And as you sing it, please sing it for Penny Edwards. Penny was called to be a deacon at a time when the church was not always welcoming to women. And she courageously trained and ministered as a deacon before moving south and marrying her beloved Tudor and of course joining Christchurch. She hadn't been well since Christmas and had been supported by friends, family and uh, the pastoral care team. But we heard last night that she died at home in bed. She was a strong, sometimes critical friend of Christchurch and we loved her all the more for that. So remembering Penny and Alistair Warman, who died yesterday. Go forth upon your journey from this world, O Christian souls. In the name of God the Father who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ who suffered for you, in the name of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you. In communion with all the blessed saints, with the angels and archangels and all the heavenly host. May your portion this day be in peace and your dwelling in paradise. So let's worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen Lord, and we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known in the world. As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit as we listen to your word. Fill us with your spirit as we worship you in majesty. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your refreshing. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your renewing. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your equipping. Fill us with your spirit as we long for your empowering. Fill us with your spirit. And the invitation to confessing, the response to in your mercy forgive us is, Lord, hear us and help us. Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, 
and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love. And renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say together Psalm 104, starting at verse 26. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea spread far and wide, and there move creatures beyond number, both small and great. There go the ships, and there is that Leviathan which you have made to play in the deep. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good. When you hide your face, they are troubled. When you take away their breath, they die and return again to the dust. When you send forth your spirit, 
They are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. So shall my song please him while I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. 
for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over the past eight or nine weeks, people have repeatedly told me that God is punishing us with plague and drought and locusts. And I have responded with polite interest because that isn't my reading of the situation and I wouldn't want to claim a false prophetic insight. Although the Old Testament Israelites did attribute murderous wrath to God, our knowledge of God is through a relationship of love and sacrifice, God's sacrifice. We relate to a God who says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. However, a week or two back, I had an experience which I think an Old Testament theologian probably would have interpreted prophetically. It started with a clatter of gravel down the chimney into the grate of our sitting room, and I blamed it on recent rain, but then I heard fluttering. I don't like desperate, trapped birds, so I pulled down the blinds, opened just one window and retreated out of the room, and through a chink of the open door, I saw a feathered tail arrive in the grate, and then it disappeared, and the intelligent bird turned itself round, so it was beak first, and then a wood pigeon shot out into the grate, crashed into the ceiling, ricocheted off a wall, and finally left through the open window. It left behind just a few downy feathers on the carpet, the memory of its noiseless fury and power, and the marks of its head and wings imprinted on the walls, and the scratch marks of its beak in the plaster of the ceiling. In the same way, the energy of that first Pentecost ricocheted through the early days of Christianity. After the first glorious ascent of the Holy Spirit, Peter, filled with the power and energy of the Spirit, preached the sermon of his life. Thousands were baptized and tens of thousands of visitors from those Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, they would all return home telling of Peter's words. Stephen would become a deacon and die a martyr. Philip would travel south on the wilderness road and convert an Ethiopian. Thomas went to India, Peter himself to Rome. And wherever they went, they made believers. And the energy of the Holy Spirit from that first Pentecost has gone on, silently reverberating through the church ever since. And each of us received the Holy Spirit at our baptism. The power and fury of it never leaves us. Sometimes the voice of the Holy Spirit is an insistent calling in our heart, which influences our life choices, our relationships, our careers even. Sometimes that voice falls still and we seem to be on our own, but that's an illusion. We are never forsaken. If we fail to listen to the Spirit, we can forget how to hear her. But if we turn our attention to the Spirit, we become attuned again. And that insight isn't just limited to Anglican Christians. The Jewish senior rabbi Jonathan Wittenberg, writing in the Times this week, said, the elders taught that all the biblical commandments were transmitted to the people by Moses except for two. And those two are, I am the Lord and have no other gods before me. These each person heard direct from God because some things, he writes, only our own heart's experience can tell us. You can't fall in love by proxy. The experience of the Spirit is personal. It is for each one of us a relationship with God. And that insight is a recognition from a perhaps unexpected source that the Holy Spirit speaks silently into all our lives. And sometimes, like that wood pigeon turning herself round in my chimney, the Holy Spirit leads us to completely change the direction of our lives, to turn things upside down. Over the centuries, the Church of England, led by the Holy Spirit, has changed its mind on the authority of the Pope, the morality of slavery, and in my lifetime, the validity of the priestly, uh, priestly ministry of women. Listening to the Spirit may take time. We may not immediately see our way, but in the end, the insights come. In the past nine weeks, 
the wider church has chosen to align itself with the government's policy of social distancing and staying at home to the extent of closing our churches, which is a more drastic response even than happened at the height of the plague in the 17th century. Our churches are and must remain the beating hearts of our communities, places of prayer and worship that witness to the power and love that silent fury of God. Our buildings are closed, but the energy and loving fury of the Holy Spirit can't be contained, can't be stopped. Even though we may not currently worship together in church, your prayerful worship at home is a way of inviting the Holy Spirit with her silent power and loving fury into your homes and families. May you also find in your homes the telltale prints of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in God, the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God, the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come, loving Jesus, 
Come, glorious God, come among us, separated as we are, and hear our prayers. As we live through a time of such challenge and change, may this celebration of Pentecost inspire us. Lord, fill our thirsty souls with your love. Fire our hearts to serve you in a new way. Breathe on us with the wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When the day of Pentecost came, there was a noise like a strong wind blowing. Wind to blow away the cobwebs of our tradition. Wind to freshen our faces and wake us to the challenges of today. Wind to fill our sails and send us on a voyage of spiritual discovery. Wind of the Spirit, blow strongly through the church and enliven us with the breath of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. They saw tongues of fire, fire to burn away what is superfluous in our lives, fire for spiritual heat to warm our hearts, fire to light a beacon of hope for the people in our communities. Fire of the Spirit, blaze away in the church and set us on fire for the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. They heard the believers speaking in their own languages, speaking in a way that people can understand, speaking to real needs and on real issues, speaking so that our neighbours want to listen. Words of the Spirit speak to us and through us that we may preach the living word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, inspire and excite us as we celebrate in worship and empower the work and witness of your church today. Guide and bless our bishops Peter and Ruth, Laura, our priest, and all who minister at Christ Church. May the challenges of the current pandemic bring about life-giving and lasting change in the church worldwide and a new unity between different churches and denominations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of the living God, May we yearn with your heart of love over the sorrow and sadness of the world, the wars, the poverty, the sickness, the natural disasters, the despoiling of our environment. Fill us with the longing, the vision and the courage to do what we can to make a difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, we ask that you would hold in your love all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. And we name before you Georgina Bowman, Jonathan and Glynis, John Cope, Andrew Sillett, Nick Spanner, Fiona Foyer, Corinna Rittner, Glyn Jackson, Joe Skoll, Joyce Wellington, Mary Morgan, Susan Stockdale, Stephanie Shotko, Helen, Harold Holmes, Anne Sixsmith, Norman Dix, Paul Keeling, Steve Lowe, Joe, Simon Green, Patrick, Patricia Byrne, Margaret Wright, Charlotte Watson, Elizabeth and Duaney, Jonathan and his family. We remember those who have died and ask your comfort for those who mourn their loss and name Betty Lockington, mother of Angela Sobersley, 
whose funeral will be held on Wednesday. And Sheila James, whose funeral took place last week. In our hearts, we name those known to us who need our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, fill us with your fruits. Enable us to be identified as God's holy people by our love and joy, our peace and patience, our kindness and generosity, our faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. May we shine as lights in the world to the glory of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, accept these and all our prayers in your name. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as the pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of surprises, your spirit brooded over the water at creation and lived among your chosen people in wilderness, exile, and the promised land. Your spirit filled Mary's womb at the moment of Jesus's conception and came upon him like a dove at his baptism. When Christ died on the cross, your power raised him from the tomb on the third day. And that same evening, he breathed your forgiving grace on those who had deserted him. On the day of Pentecost, you sent your spirit upon the fearful disciples, filling them with power, with wonder and joy and making them your church. And so we thank you with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpour it, 
may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. May the light of the Father's face shine upon you, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ indwell you, and the power of the Holy Spirit comfort and strengthen you. Amen.
faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed you, sovereign God, overflowing in love. With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in Bath, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places. We will. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples, and we invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created 
breathe into you the life he gives. May the spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. May the spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.